Hi and welcome to Wrong Way. And today is a very exciting day because today we will be unboxing the Begola. <laughs> What's happening to me? The Begola. <laughs> I feel a sudden influx of metal. We will be unboxing uh, the Begola. <laughs> Before we get into the video though, probably as you are watching uh, this unboxing, we actually hit 50,000 subscribers, 50,000 subscriber marks. That's crazy! And I am very grateful to each and every one of you for watching those videos, for commenting, uh, for spreading the EUC knowledge and love. And yeah, I'm just extremely happy uh, that um, I can make this, we can make this together. Uh, that we love PVs, we love e-scooters, e-bikes, EUCs, probably the most. But anyways, we love all the PVs and I think it's just like a super happy, good movement we are doing here together. So big thanks uh, to you guys. I didn't have actually um, anything planned for um, this um, occasion, but yesterday I came up with an idea because uh, a while ago I was actually asking you guys um, if I should bring back the Bigode videos that are on my channel. And if you've been subscribed to the channel for a bit, I actually privated those videos um, just in case so new people that want to get into the sport or want to buy a used unicycle, they don't get like the wrong idea and don't get into a wheel without having all of the knowledge that I actually didn't have at that time. Uh, most of this is related to battery fires of Bigode wheels. However, uh, I think that those videos also do have some um, nostalgia values and I also watch them from time to time. So uh, I know that you, I think, you want to watch them too. So I was reading through the comments uh, on a post I did recently and I decided that I will um, make those videos available to you again. However, it will be a unlisted playlist that you can access in the link uh, in the description below. And in this list there will be also informational videos that I did on battery fires and battery safety that I did later on. So before you jump into it, before you jump into buying any wheel, I would suggest that you look at those videos. But yeah, uh, I think since those videos are made anyways and the inputs on you know how to ride, how to do certain things is interesting anyway, um, I think it's just right uh, to make them um, available to you again, especially for you longtime viewers that enjoy looking at those videos. All right, let's get into the unboxing. Big thanks to my e-wheel for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. And if you want to buy a wheel like that, first of all, I would suggest to you to wait for the final review, wait for the teardown. I'll do a series of videos on the Bigode Master. And unboxing are usually just exciting videos. I can't hide my excitement because I'm excited to open this box up. But just a disclaimer, it's best to wait for the full review and the teardown to really have a good basis for your purchase decision. With that said, my e-wheel is not the only partner I'm working with. There's a list of distributors below that I also cooperate with and I wanted to highlight e-wheels there because e-wheels throughout the years continued to have a great customer support. They're really active in the community and they are actually fixing issues if they arise. The best example being now the Begode wheels available with better BMS systems, better battery packs from Litec. So I received two boxes. You will receive just one box if you will buy a Begode Master. It was just been shipped to me via air and there uh, it's easier to get a permit to ship, ship them uh, separately than to ship the battery in a plane, a uh, cargo plane of course, uh, with the batteries inside. Uh, it's nice to see though, there's a UN3481 sticker, which means that there is there are batteries inside. Sometimes those stickers are missing, it's good that they're here. The batteries are also certified in China, uh, in terms of their safety with the UL 
3 norm, but when it comes to batteries, even if they're certified, issues may arise, like we've seen with several big old MSPs, RSs, and Nicholas. With that said, here are the battery packs. Uh, pretty well protected, although there was already a hole. Yeah, better to double box it next time, Bagode. I won't go into too much detail regarding uh, the batteries here. Maybe it's best for you then to wait for the teardown where I will um, open up the wheel, check its properties and really check the quality from the inside. Nevertheless, an interesting fact an interesting development for Bigode is that the pack isn't more like inside of the wheel, but it's outside and has this nice plastic casing, which is very shiny. We have four of those battery packs and each one of them is 33 volts. So once you add them all up in series, which is a new development by Bigode, uh, you get a wheel that is 133 volts. And this higher voltage allowed them to create a wheel that supposedly will have a very high speed, but will be also able to have a lot of torque. Something that I've been lacking in the S20. Yeah, it has high speed, but just the torque is just not what I'm used to from high torque bigode wheels. And because it's maybe not that interesting to just like open up every one of those batteries, I'll really quickly open them and through the magic of editing, I'll start unboxing the um, Bigode Master in the next frame. All right, so with all of the batteries unboxed, it will be time to open up the next box. And actually, a interesting fact as well about the Master is that there are several battery options available. So the version I have here is the Samsung 50E with the stock Bigode BMS. Uh, but there are also options of high discharge batteries like Samsung 40Ts or the Molecel P42A, which are far superior in terms of uh, performance use. Now, if you will just ride casually and you'll need like the most range, you won't have much acceleration or braking, then yes, Samsung 50Es will do. But I think that the high discharge cells is what you need for this EUC. Apart from that, there's also an option for the LiTech BMS, which I believe, well, based on the information on the other packs they did before, will have a temperature sensor and also other uh, safety features. So if you would ever consider buying this, or if I will consider actually buying this, if it turns out to be a cool wheel, I would choose the LiTech option for sure. That's number one. And number two, probably the Molecel P40U2A very high discharge cells as well as pretty high capacity for their high discharge behavior. So I'm really happy about this development because the safety of the battery pack, this is what's been lacking in Gotway wheels and this is why I don't have any of those here and I will still keep this in a fire sack for now. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. What do we have here? Owner's manual. If you've never seen as the interpretation of what a owner's manual is by Bigode, then today is your lucky day. Because here you can see the owner's manual. It's just the information about all of the specs. So it's not an owner's manual, like that's bad. Bigode needs to change that. We also have a certificate of compliance. And actually, this is for the electronics. Um, I, if you, you can check each and every one of those, they are not really related to the battery safety. So I guess it's cool it's there, but it doesn't mean that much maybe as you think it does. On the top, we can find some nice quality foam. It doesn't leave those small bits and pieces everywhere around, so that's cool. And here it is in all of its bigode glory. Pretty cool design here, quite similar to the, uh, oh wow, That's, that works nice. Woo, that's a cool trolley handle. We have a trolley handle that also doubles as a lift handle. So that's very cool and wow, works very satisfying. So let's take this beast out. Ooh. And in the box we can also find the, um, that's like an underside pad. It's just for like the protection of the bottom of the wheel. Very cool that it's like squishy. 
We have a pump for the um, suspension. This wheel does have air suspension. More pads, and this actually also doubles as the front part of the wheel. You'll see when it's on soon. And on the bottom here, it's a different placement, we have the charger. And the charger is a uh, different brand, as far as I know, from the YZ power that they used before. Maybe it's a better quality charger, I don't know. And it is a 3 amp charger at 134.4 volt. So, so to fully charge this wheel, it will take around 7-8 hours. So not the fastest, uh, but I guess you can use two of those to charge it at in three to four hours. Also a different plug, pretty fat. I think that's the GX24. It's definitely a different brand. I also tested if there is a spark when I connect the plug into the wheel when the charger is not connected to the wall outlet. No spark. That's the first time ever I've seen this. There was no spark when wow. I put the plug into the wheel. Now, this doesn't mean that the charge board isn't hot and I will have to investigate that in the teardown, but this already is a great development to bigger safety of big old wheels. Wow! All right, so now that the wheel is out of the box, I can take off this wrapping. It's stuck to the sticker here in the back. So that's that. We have Bigode spiked pedals, and these are actually nice spikes, and I guess you can also take them out to replace them with new ones. Very cool, very big and spacious too. I like that, but probably also very heavy. A metal construction here, and a very nice slider design. <clears throat> That's what you don't have, uh, S20. And yeah, everything looks very simple, but also kind of well thought out. I like the, I like the quality of it. And also the top of the wheel, is also rubber. If you lean with your legs against this, it won't be as hard plastic as in, I don't know, a Sherman or a wheel that doesn't have pads here on the top. Even looser than on the uh, King Song S20. And yeah, well, before I tell you anything more about the wheel, I guess it's time to assemble it and uh, then I'll talk about it a bit more. And uh, fun fact, on the batteries, there's also no indication of what is inside. There's even no warning label or anything. That's also bad. Before I plug the batteries in really quick, a good um, thing about the Bigo development here is that the motherboard is now on the top. So it's better for waterproofing. However, this doesn't have any IP rating. So wait for a teardown until I can really find out if there are any nooks or crevices to, uh, for water to get in. However, from the top, I don't think there are many options, which is really cool. All right, now that we have all of the batteries in place, the process was pretty straightforward. And I like, in general, the quality of the screws of the build, like it, it seems really like a big step up from what Bigode was doing before. Um, but now we have to connect the batteries and I'll tell you a bit about that too. Uh, since this wheel doesn't have a failsafe. So if you have a veteran Sherman, for example, there are two battery packs there. Each one of them can run on its own. Even if there's a problem with a BMS, which can happen, or there is just something wrong with the battery pack, it can still run on one of the packs that is still working. The same thing applies to other Bigode wheels, like the Bigode RS, EXN, etc., etc. But with the Bigode Master, that is not the case. This wheel cannot run with just three battery packs or two battery, battery packs working. If the battery fails, then it fails and then it falls. So this is a bit of a concern of mine. So I think they just did it in, because of cost and you know, getting BMSs for a 30 volt um, battery will be way cheaper than getting one for a 134 volt. So I think that's the reason. But nevertheless, it's a bit of a concern to not have any, you know, fail safes. Uh, one good thing that I uh, found out though, 
is that the batteries weren't fully charged. And that is great because uh, they shouldn't be. For transportation, it's most important, it's best to have not that high of a voltage because then uh, the batteries don't get degraded that quickly. When they're on, on, if they're on full voltage, they get degraded quickly or quicker. And they're not that hazardous. You know, everything is sort of in and now the most uh, unpleasant moment, we have to connect it all up. And yeah, all right, let's do it. Okay, small spark. Everything seems to work. All right, all is connected. Let's just really quickly see if it actually works and then we can move on to put on putting on the power pads all right so i managed to put everything together everything works now that all of this is assembled it's time to put the power pads on some adhesive here double-sided tape and it should fall perfectly into a groove here we should put it on like that like i'm getting the tape off with the double sided I'm getting the whole double sided tape off so maybe I'll do it off camera I guess that's not the most elegant way of dealing with side pads but I guess that's that let's put on the bottom one and I think oh they even made holes for the bottom ones for the screws so it should fit in perfectly one eternity later all right, we got it all assembled and this is how it looks like. I think that's a big difference from what we received in the box. And it actually also works! Yay! I will just now need to pump up the suspension with the included pump. And after a bit of a rest, which I need to take for myself, because this has been a lot of work actually, to assemble the wheel, I will tell you what I think of it. So to pump up the suspension, that doesn't look good. Uh, oh, I need to put the mud guard down and connect the pump. And I will pump it up to around 200 PSI. Looks pretty smooth for now. Long way. Now the suspension mechanism itself, like the damper, is branded Bigod. But I think you can also put a different damper in there. It's like a standard uh, sort of dimension. Oh, it's not a bit hard to pump it up. Um, I don't know about the quality of this one, but it also has a rebound adjustment, so that's cool. That's getting a bit hard to press. But it's an air suspension, so it should be a bit more comfortable than the one on the S20. And sadly, in cold weather, you'll need to watch out more for the pressure. Because in cold weather, those shocks typically don't perform that well. They can leak air. So, all right, that's pumped up. And I think this is the only valve we have here. Oh yeah, now it's way higher. Oh, all right. That feels way smoother than the S20. All right, let me take a break and I'll get back to you in a second. All right, so finally in all of its glory, the Bigode Master 134 volt EUC. And just by, you know, inspecting this wheel, um, getting a closer look at it, there's a lot of things actually to like here. But the biggest uh, concern of mine is of course the battery department and if it's actually a safe wheel. And with the track record of Bigode and, they, and them still not addressing several of the fires that happened before with their wheels, uh, I have my doubts there, but hey, we will have to find out what this wheel is really like and uh, inspect it with teardown and review it. But my first impressions of it is that it's kind of cool and yeah, l let me just run you through some of the things here. Uh, first of all, you can see that the balance of it is great. It's pretty much a 50-50 balance and you can see that even if, if I turn it off, it's slowly falling to the back compared to the S20, which I believe is the closest competitor of it. This wheel I can barely like uh, move when it's, um, when it's turned off. It's like initially just going backwards by a bit and if I turn it off oh wait, it just straight up falls on the back so the balance of the master is 
a lot better than the one of the S20. Uh, there's a lot of uh, stock features to like here as well. First of all, the pedals, they're really cool, uh, way better than, I think the best pedals that I've seen yet to a uh, stock wheel, because it has the right studs that are sticking out better and I think you can also take them out and replace them. The pedals are also angle adjustable. Uh, they're easy to take out. Here is a screw similar to what we see on the motion wheels that you loose, have to loosen and then you can also set up how tight those pedals are. No magnet here, but also a very cool simple solution. I like those pedals a lot and probably I'll make them steeper as well. But hey, it's possible because you have a Yes, that's my seat. Uh, pedal angle adjustment. We have stock power pads now. I don't know how well they will do, uh, especially the brake pad here seems really small, so probably I'll need to put on something uh, below. And I don't know the mud guard seems to be on a okay length, so water won't be spraying. But here um, in the front, probably uh, it will be spraying a lot of water to the sides, so maybe a longer mud, mud guard in the future would be cool. Um, let's check out the lights real quick and I'll compare them also to the V11 so you can see this um, the comparison right now. The beam is uh, pretty wide so it will be blinding others, it's not like cut off like the V11 but I guess it's pretty bright, let's see. Ah! 102, 102 free spin on a not full battery. But yeah, in terms of the light, I guess it could be better, but it's also not the worst I've seen. They're also adjustable, so you can move them up or down here by loosening two screws, which is really cool. And of course, you also have the screen here on the top, which looks great, it looks very readable. It has the most important features that you would want to see, like the uh, battery indicator. Maybe it would be nicer if it would be a voltage indicator, but it's uh, five bars, so I guess it's pretty accurate. There's the speed, there's the mode you're riding in, the temperature, which is really important, of the motherboard, and also a odometer. Really cool. There's a lift switch, but I don't really know how it works. It doesn't seem to work. Oh, that's very cool. The lift sensor provides sort of a resistance. So now the lift sensor is off, and when I press it, Oh, that's very cool. The wheel doesn't topple over so easily. So my lift sensor does work. Very cool. And then I can lift it up and put it back down. And it provides a bit of assistance so the wheel doesn't topple over that easily. Very nice. So I need to press it twice. Cool. I really like the handle, so it's really easy to just like lift it up and the balance is right, so there's no problem with that either. Uh, and the trolley handle is on a nice height and it's very surprisingly durable so it will be nice to actually push this wheel around and this is also better than on the S20. Uh, I like that there's a seat sort of included in this whole top uh, contraption so I guess it will be somewhat comfortable I don't know yet but I'm happy that it's here. Um, there is a beeper located here underneath the front light which is very loud also another awesome feature. Um, so there's a lot of like features to like about this wheel. I think there is no speaker, but let me really quickly double check. I see no speaker here, so the wheel doesn't have a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, similar to the S20, I would like to see a speaker, but hey, that's what we get here. We don't have any mood lighting. We have just the front light and the tail light. The tail light doesn't seem to be of the brightest kind, and it's really easy to for water to like get in here. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, so I, anyways, I will not ride this wheel uh, in rain before I take it apart and see what it really looks like. However, the batteries look really well sealed. Um, the suspension seems to work surprisingly smoothly. So just check it out here on the, on the um, Big Oat Master. It really like moves, goes up and down. It has a bit of a sound and you have seen the loose components in the back, but it is so much better in its work than uh, the one here on the S20. <laughs> yeah, it's just... 
the slider mechanism on the S20 is far inferior, at least to the first like inspection than the one on the um, Bigot Master. The kickstand looks all right. I don't think it's the sturdiest one, but definitely better than on the V11. There's also a metal mud guard here in, inside. The charge ports are located underneath the trolley here. I like the charge ports because they're really big. They have fat pins, the GX20-4, so that's really cool. Uh, and in general, when I was like inspecting the wheel, it doesn't look that bad in the waterproofing department. And I really like that they added this sort of foam protection all around because, yeah, you're going to fall. And if, if you have like this sort of uh, rubber compound around, then you won't get like scratches and you won't get that much vibration, which is bad for the battery. So this is all very cool and it provides a second layer of safety to the motherboard. So here you have just the plastic or if you have the seat on too, then you have uh, the sort of seat as a um, safety mechanism, safety layer. But here you have also this, the same thing on the sides. Um, so yeah, initial impressions, like maybe the pads could be like mounted a bit more sturdily, but that was, that's what we get here. So there's a lot. Uh, of things to like here. I guess now I have to just um, review it, I have to write it, I have to tear it down, I have to check it out. But I see a lot of improvements so for, uh, in Bigot's department. Now, of course, like one, two screws were missing here and like um, you have still, like this time you have metal screws in the plastic in, uh, uh, instead of wood screws. So there is still the Bigot flavor in that wheel. But the general impression is that it is a lot cooler. Uh, but, you know, none of this matters if in the end the safety isn't there, so I guess that's that. With that said, I'm very pleased with this uh, initial unboxing of the Bigode Master. And if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.